Where's Jimmy? Yeah, where is Jimmy? Mm, okay. Well, we've got Luke here, so. Uh, <laughs> Um, I can replace him. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're slated to replace him anyway. Um, so, okay, um, so, so, so what I, so who here is, um, all right, let's kind of feel too, too far in the room. Who here does not know what SPI is? No one. Is everyone, who, who here is a contributing member of, of, of SPI? Okay, and then, so there's like maybe five or six people that are not members. Why not? Yeah, why not? Because no one's wearing the uh, NMQ on it right now. <laughs> oh, that we just fixed that. We got new people. Ah, one of them sitting behind you. But, but it's a, <laughs> you know, so um, okay. Well, maybe if if all we accomplish is that you walk out and sign up for the for the contributing membership, for the contributing membership then 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 we'll have made a small success. So um, I will do a kind of a little baby introduction to, to to SPI and kind of how things stand and what our goals are and where we're going to go and then I would like this to turn into a conversation after that so we can talk about the sorts of things that maybe SPI has done and people like and maybe some of the sorts of things that SPI has not done. Um, is there it, um, is not done or people would like to see it, it do in the future and then we can kind of, um, I mean, so I think that actually a lot of feedback that we've got in, in previous dev pumps at similar meetings like this have been very useful to me and to other people on the board in terms of deciding um, deciding where to focus. There are some things, I mean, clearly we can't do everything, so people may suggest something that, that, that it's a really great idea that we can't follow up on, but um, I think that I think that most people would agree that the SPI has been on, a, on an upward track um, over the last couple of years. So and has been accomplishing more of the things that we want to do uh, and, and doing better. So so okay. So 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 software in the public interest is a nonprofit organization um, that is founded to help organizations distribute uh, open hardware and software. Uh, in reality, we focus almost entirely on on software. Stuff. Hey, you sit up at the front. Okay. All right. Um. um Oh, we've got a lot. Um, we, we, have the, we, we have a quorum, don't we? Almost. almost, almost. We're one, 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 one short. Yeah, but I don't think we can expect another. Okay. So we don't expect Bruce to work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we Our almost. So, so for a very long time, getting getting quorum was uh, of the board was actually very difficult. Um, and now we almost have it, just sitting in this room. Uh, so we really need to do a face-to-face -face meeting sometime. We almost have now. Yeah. So, so Software for the Public Interest is a nonprofit organization that helps people distribute open hardware and open software, um, and free, in particular free software. Um, in reality, we focus almost entirely on supporting free software projects in um, in a number of ways. The the, the basic idea. So, 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 so I'll, I'll, I'll describe how that how that works. Um, Software for the Public Interest was a nonprofit organization that was uh, that was created on in in 1997. Um, and it was incorporated in New York State, uh, so it's a U.S. organization, um, and it is what's called a 501c3, which basically means that if you're in the U.S. and you give money to it, and you give money to SPI, you can deduct it from your taxes. It's a, it's like the, the most charitable kind of charity. Um, there are less charitable charities. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I mean, th there are some where you get to deduct less or deduct differently, but but um, 501c3s are probably the most limited type of organization in terms of the types of uh, things that you can do. You can't, for example, um, advocate a particular politician. Um, you can't. Th there, there, are, there, are, there are lots of limits. Um, if you were to start you can't working, issue ads. You can't run issue ads. You can't. If you if you are um, if you give money to other organizations overseas, you transfer money. It has to be to an organization with a similar standing or with a like a at least as charitable status in whatever the other rules are. It's a little bit tricky. So so um, but the benefit, of course, is that people have um, a major incentive to um, at least people people in the U.S. have a major incentive to to, to donate. Yeah. Can I add that it's not just that people themselves have a major incentive to donate, but often 
uh, em employers have matching gift programs. So if an employee yes. get, arranges for some money to come out of his check, in many cases the employer will match it, yeah. doubling mm -hmm. the effectiveness of the donation to SBF, the size. Yeah. So, 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 so that's um, yeah. So, so there's all, so there's a number of benefits that, in some ways, mean that uh, the, 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 the mean that SPI has more resources in the end because people are more interested in donating to that type of organization, at least in the U.S. Um, there are a number of different um, nonprofit organizations um, with similar or identical statuses um, in the U.S. and abroad. Um, the major ones seem to be, I mean, the, the Free Software Foundation and the Open Source Initiative, and then there's Software in the Public Interest. Now, um, and then there are a number of these foundations which are popping up per project, which has been something we've been seeing in, the, in, in recent years. So, there's, so for example, the GNOME Foundation will create a foundation, and the and Apache will has, has a foundation, and Gen2 um, Gen Gen has a foundation. Uh, Clone has a foundation now. I mean, a lot of these different groups are creating their own foundations for um, l larger projects. These kind of super projects, the hundreds and hundreds of contributors kind of level, are are creating their their own foundations to support to support development. So, so so software in the public interest was kind of like this. It was created. It was created um, by people that were involved in the Debian project to serve the Debian project, but it also had kind of a, a bigger vision, um, which was also supporting other projects um, and, a, and a wider variety of, 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 of projects through, through taking donations and helping funnel that into development or development resources. Um, people can donate a piece of hardware and write off that donation on their taxes, or a company can do this. Um, um, and there's a number of benefits for this. Did you? Yeah, and part of the reason that, that that was the idea was because it's a non-trivial amount of labor, paperwork, and money to set up a 501c3 organization. So I think a large part of the original motivation, as I recall from email threads anyway, mm -hmm. was... Do it once. Yeah, do it once, and then we can serve lots of these little open source free software projects that pop up. Mm -hmm. and, and Debian was just, you know, the, the, the one with an instant need. But, but, but um, and in a way, because Debian is, I mean, I, I find this kind of cool because Debian in many ways is uh, like a, a, you know, it's a little encapsulation of the free software universe. Yeah. Um, it includes, you know, all of the projects that, you know, that, that, that would be potential member or actual member projects are within Debian as well. Um, so, um, so in this way, um, in this way, SPI is, is basically, is, is as far as I know, unique. Um, in that it's an organization that is willing to serve a variety of different organizations in in terms of holding potentially holding intellectual property things like trademarks um, and um, we could do copyright assignments although we don't already there's been talk about doing it for some kind of shared resources for example the Debian website or something like this um, um, things that are really kind of project creations um, um, which would be useful because there have been situations where people might want to relicense and it's not realistic to find every person who's commit, who's made a change to a web page in Debian. Um, this has been a little bit of um, in order to say, hey, so do you, you know, agree with moving to a different license? I'm not totally sure if, if the existing Debian website license would be legitimate for packaging within Debian. That's the problem, um, <laughs> is that the Debian website license is one that people are not happy with, um, and people will want to change. So this is something that, that has been an idea. Um, changing this, uh, changing this to, to same goes for the trademark license. Yeah. So 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 we've got um, so 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 um, in holding intellectual property and holding money. Um, the main names too. Are, are the main are the main two things. We also provide legal support um, because we have a lawyer. Uh, yes, we have an um, um, who's who's uh, I guess he's been we we changed layers about a year ago. Um, but we've got a lawyer who worked for a, for a little while on our um, trademark license, and he's actually actually now in the. Uh, he's also a Debian maintainer. Um, um, he works for a big law firm, and he maintains a couple packages, uh, and is in the NMQ. So, um, which is probably pretty cool. I don't think any other foundations have lawyers that are uh, also developers. So. Um, Depends on how you measure that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I understand it, even Moglin got his undergraduate degree in computer science. But even Evan Moglin, I don't know that he does a lot of coding. Evan Moglin, Evan Moglin he, he doesn't do very much. Evan Moglin, Evan Moglin worked with is the, the general counsel for the FSF, and he actually worked um, sharing a desk with Richard Stallman when he was 19 years old <laughs> um, in a computer yeah. uh, company. So, um, so he's, I mean, he's a real hacker too. But, um, 
<laughs> so, um, but, uh, so, so, so those are the two major ways. Um, it's kind of like an umbrella organization for other organizations. Um, in reality, about 90% of SPI is, is the Debian project. Um, there is one board member who is from another member project. So the member project, other member projects um, that are active are, um, are, are Drupal, OFTC, um, who is where our other board member is from. Um, our secretary is from OFTC. Um, Drupal, OFTC, WX Widgets, um, WX Widgets Fresco. Fresco. Uh, they're not active. They are still hosted by us. And they still like ask things. They don't actually get a lot of money, but they do oh, they get do. support. They we actually host okay. them. Host well, them. I, I knew we still hosted them, but I wasn't aware that, that anyone from that project actually still said anything. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> they talk, to, they talk to, to, to Wiggy, and that's about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that counts. Can you check Max? Um, yeah. And then the older... And then, New step. New step, right. Yeah. So, new step. So there's a number of these projects. Basically, the, 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 there seems to be a project that is big enough, like, like Drupal or WX widgets and a number of these things, they're big enough that they could really use uh, <laughs> some kind of, you know, they have people that want to make donations of hardware, of money, and a number of these things, and they're really looking for a legal shell. But they're small enough that I mean, creating an entire organization would be, would be a little overkill for them. On their website, they're actually talking about doing that now. I'm very confused. <laughs> WX widgets? No, Drupal. Oh. So, yeah, so okay. I mean, it seems really, <laughs> and so there have been a couple examples of projects that have kind of outgrown SPI in the past. Yeah. Um, and well, then kind of grown into their own. Little ones like GNOME. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the open source initiative. And the open source initiative. Well, there's questions whether it was kind of pushed out the door. Yeah, or yeah, I know. But, but, <laughs> um, and there's some places where it's not necessarily good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so the open source, so, so, so the, probably the most famous baby SPI projects that have grown up are the open source initiative and the GNOME, or the, and the GNOME project, um, which were both, kind of, at least some parts of them were within SPI early on, and then they kind of were, they left one way or another, um, and went well, to create their own. Well, when, when, you know, three quarters of the four man SPI board vanished and left poor Ian <laughs> as the lone remaining board member, yeah. you know, the, the, the SPI was significantly disrupted for a couple of years. But one thing to, <laughs> to, to, to underscore, and now, now that I've made that understatement, um, I'd like to underscore that, that a lot of people have the perception that, that, that SPI only really serves Debian, but unless $1,000 is a trivial amount of money, um, you know, WX Widgets had a fundraiser, which they didn't actually tell us that they were going to do. But they did it after they joined us, and they they raised a, a pretty fair amount of money, uh, and we you know we got it to them. Yeah, cool. And we actually turned that around fairly quickly. Now this at this point this is something like a year to eighteen months ago, mm -hmm. but uh, you know that was one thing I managed to not screw up as treasurer. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> so 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 yeah. So there's a number of um, so there's a there's a, a growing number of um, um, and it's grow and, and of these and of these member projects. Three of them are in the last year, I think, or in the last, like, yeah, year. I'd also point out that um, the other organizations that do things kind of like SPI and SPI do talk to each other. We have a lot of cross connections with, right. well, the FSF one is fairly obvious, I guess, but um, there's actually a meeting coming up just before the O'Reilly Open Source Convention in Portland that I've agreed to show up for to represent SPI, where people from the Gnome Foundation and I forget, there's this whole list of other nonprofits, and for, not just from the U.S., but from other countries. We'll, we'll all be getting together for a couple days to figure out what, if anything, we could share. And, so. Sure. I read about that. So. Also, SPI and the Open Source Initiative have had mutual observer status at the past, and we're talking about uh, reestablishing that as well, which will probably happen. Yeah. It just occurred to me you didn't introduce us. And so oh, okay. So I'll introduce the other SPA people over here. Maybe you can stand up actually and introduce yourself. All right. I am Jimmy Kaplowitz. I am the SPI treasurer. I've been a board member since I became treasurer in February 2004. So, uh, yeah, that's like a thankless job. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. But, but, yeah. thank you. I, think I should know. I think it's uh, I'm Ian Jackson. Um, I've been on the board ever since I can remember, and I'm basically just being a pain in the backside. Uh, hi, I'm Brandon Robinson, uh, erstwhile SPI treasurer. I'm now the deputy treasurer. I still get a lot of the mail and the checks, 
and I try to deposit those on a regular basis. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, I was, let's see, I was actually uh, properly uh, re-elected to the board last year, was it? Was it? I think so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, B-Dale and I ran at the same time, and we, we both got elected onto the board. So, um, that, that's who I am. Yeah, I'm Gideon Garvey. I've served as an advisor to the SPI board for a while, and then officially as Debian's representative during the time that I was DPL, and then um, served as sort of, I went back to a, an advisory sort of status after I finished my tenure as DPL, and then finally got around to thinking that maybe I'd actually run for a board seat, um, and have been on the board now for uh, a little over a year, I guess. <coughs> and. Uh, uh, continue to just sort of you know, try and provide a little adult supervision. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 the board, um, so, 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 uh, SPI is a membership organization, um, and and um, there there are two classes of membership. There are contributing members and non-contributing members. There are, there are not very many non-contributing members. I have the numbers up here. So. Um, let me uh, find the exact numbers. But there are somewhere in the range of um, a contributing member is anybody who is. Well, there are a lot of non-contributing members. We, we should mention the other board members too. Okay, so I can't. You can there's, John, there's John Gorzen, who is the, the president. president, and you're the vice president. I'm the vice president. And Jimmy's the treasurer. And David Graham of OFTC is, uh, is the secretary. And <coughs> so, uh, so we've got Vidal. We got Bruce Perrins. He was elected to the board in the same round as uh, myself and no, Dale, he, he was with me. Oh, that's right. We've had two of those yeah. elections. Okay. Um, uh, um, who, who are Joey Schultze. Getting? That's right. Joey Schultze. He's, he's also been on the SPI board for a very long time, mm -hmm. since before me or B. Dale, I think. And then, is there anybody else, or is that... <laughs> We don't, we don't, I have the list. So we don't remember I'll, them. I'll, do they count? I'll see if I. And I'm, everybody on the board, except for David Graham, is involved with Debian, and David Graham is involved in OSTC, and I am also an, a nominally an OFTC staff member, although I do very little for them. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, OFTC is a, a, a largely an IRC network um, as an alternative to Freenet. That's actually the full list. That's everybody. So, um, and then there are a couple uh, advisors. Yes. Um, Gregory Pomerantz is the legal counsel, mm -hmm. so he doesn't, uh, but that's okay because he's usually at work when we have meetings anyway. Um, um, but uh, and then Jeff Waugh is the is is um, Jeff Waugh is at least in theory the um, well he is actually the Genome Foundation board representative, so this is another way of kind of kind of trying to keep that. He talks to various of us at different times, but being in Australia, the time sink. Is sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, I talk to Jeff Waugh all the time, but not only 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 probably every couple months by SPI. And at various times we've had kind of an observing <coughs> board member from uh, OSI. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the most recent, I believe, was uh, uh, Guido Van Rossum, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, uh, author of Python. And uh, he was affiliated with OSI for a time. I'm not sure he still is. But uh, while he was, uh, he, he sat in on SPI board meetings. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, we are, uh, so SPI is a membership organization. Um, there are there are two kinds of um, two kinds of members. There are contributing members and non-contributing members. Con co contribution um, contributing it refers to contributing in any way to the free software community, not to paying money. Um, um, there are no dues to become a member of SPI. Um, to become a non-contributing member, you just sign up. Is that correct? Um, so, so if you just want to, if you if you want to be a non-contributing member, you just go to the web page and say sign me up. And evidently, almost 300 people have done that. Um, um, contributing members, um, there are also about 300 contributing members, um, and contributing members are people who have, you know, contributed in some way to the to the free software community. If you are a member of the Debian project um, or another um, another member project, member project it's Automatic. Yeah, you're automatically eligible. You do actually need to go to the website and sign up. You don't, yep. you, you don't get automatically subscribed to mailing lists and stuff like that. But if you're a Debian developer, uh, then you are automatically eligible for contributing membership. And I suspect most people who are in the new maintainer queue, uh, because of the you know fairly high requirements uh, these days, um, most people in the MQ seem to have to have sponsor packages and stuff. Then you're probably also contributing yep. substantially enough. Yep. become an SPI contributing member. I mean, so if that's something you'd be interested in doing, 
and you're not yet a Debian developer, don't let that discourage you. I mean, uh, basically, the, the process works something like, I'm a contributing member, I work on these projects, and then there's a little bit of Googling. And if it looks <laughs> yeah. like you don't work on those projects, like, you know, I work on, you know, Python, and then you search the Python mailing list, and there's no messages from you, and you say, okay, maybe I should ask you again for some more information. But if it's clear that you're contributing in yeah. some way, then, then it's like, it's pretty so, easy. Compared to the Debian NN process, it's pretty lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we have a, uh, a, a recently chosen new membership committee, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the new so the, so 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 for a long time it was Martin it was Martin Michelmeyer and Peter Fosberger, um who ran the uh, kind of maintained the websites for voting and for this whole membership process. Also the guidelines for joining. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then and then uh, so there yeah so there's voting stuff and then and then they in in April of this year the the two of them said you know we've done this for a long time and we're going to move on to other stuff. And so we have a new membership committee. Uh, so there's a little bit of a, a hitch in there, but so there are, I think like, there were a few people waiting, a couple dozen people. But um, the new membership committee is Graham Wilson, um, Luke Kleiss, Luke Klaas. Klaas, okay, Luke Klaas, and uh, and uh, Michael Schultheis. Schultheis. Okay. Yeah, Mike, Michael Schultheis is a coworker of mine. He works. Sure, I just don't know how to pronounce his name. So. Yeah. But, um, and then Michael Schultheis. So that's the. He's that's also a Debian developer. Cool. So, um, I think, so, so that's our membership committee. Um, and actually, uh, Luke is also Greg Pomerantz, our lawyer's um, uh, 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 application, application manager for Debian, which is which is a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> let me let me mention uh, the the main benefit of membership is that it renders you eligible to vote in the elections for the board of directors. Yeah. I don't think Mako explicitly said that, but we've mentioned uh, election to the board, and that is how you get a vote, is by becoming a contributing member of SPI. Um, right, and those will happen, um, I guess, every year or every other year, depending on when people are being elected. Yeah, we, we didn't require any this year because nobody's seat was expiring. It's for a three-year term? Three-year terms. Yeah. So, so um, and I think, I, I think that... Term. You probably should be, if you're planning on running for the board, you should also probably be a contributing member. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bruce's parents didn't bother and it didn't stop him, but <laughs> as a rule. <laughs> um, <but laughs> you can't vote for yourself. Can you vote for yourself? <laughs> so, um, so, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, um, and there'll be elections next year for a number of seats, actually. Yeah, for, I, think I think like like four. Yeah, we four, got quite a bit for like four or five seats. seats. So um, thinking about this in the future would be good. So um, I think um, let me look and see if I have anything else. That would be that would be July first of next year when that happens because by our bylaws we have to meet on July first, no matter what day of the week it is. If it's Saturday, Sunday, it doesn't matter. Uh, the annual meeting is July first. So if you want to influence the outcome of the next board election, you've got just about a year to. Uh, I think I think that starts the nomination period. I think you can nominate through July thirteenth or so. Okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. In any case, Jimmy's got the details there. Um, so, so in any case, the, only, the last thing I want to say before I kind of open things up is that um, that that there's been there's been this kind of so 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 one problem with SPI, which is actually like a problem with the way that like I guess like businesses work internationally um, and charities work internationally, is that is that it's a lot is that SPI is more useful in the U.S. than it is outside of the U.S. Um, and there was a strategic decision, or perhaps. Not a strategic decision to make it make it a U.S. Um, organization. A lot of people do that. What this, what this, but but there are still people who want to give money to charitable organizations that don't live in the U.S. Right? Um, um, and um, and and working with that can be a little bit. Um, and and just people who want to give money to to, to Debian in a way. So can I come in there? Yeah, and absolutely. say that the relationship of SBI with say Debian or indeed with any other project is not exclusive. So yes. there are other organizations, for example, there's um, FFIS, there's FFIS, there's the um, Debian UK thing that Steve yeah. Max set up. Mm -hmm. um, and given that you have to have an American organization for American taxpayers to get those tax benefits, there has to be an American organization and that's what SBI is. Um, but often it doesn't make sense for yeah, people we, we're outside we're the US to deal with um, American exactly. organizations because so, it's just, <laughs> just right. too well, and also yeah. local so, charity laws are quite so, often extreme. If if we were trying to set the same thing up in the UK, the Debian UK 
we've set up as an informal uh, society. Mm -hmm. right. We have a, a bank account. Well, we may have a bank account if the bank ever gets their fucking act together. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, you, in, a, in the UK, to do a full-on charity is so difficult to actually have the aims that we have. Well, it is in the US too. You have to yeah. have a board, you have to have all these things. I know, I mean, as well as that, uh, yeah. there are some fairly strict rules about what you can do and not do uh, as the same. Same but, thing. But they are, it's quite difficult to find the slot of the sort of charity that you are, that, yeah. you, that you can possibly fit into, because uh, uh, there are about five different types of charities. And, uh, right. yeah. so, 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 so SPI is a little bit, there, there are a few things that, um, so this is true. So there are a lot, so it's not only a specific relationship. There are many organizations that support, that, that hold assets for the Debian project, or, or for other member projects, um, for, for other member projects internationally. I've been trying to report on some of those uh, in my DPL reports mm -hmm. uh, today, and it's it's interesting. I, I just want to underscore Ian's point because it's inter it's interesting as we as we move DevConf around from place to place, we seem to find new organizations to become affiliated with and hold assets with. Like I don't think Linux uh, Activatory. Mm -hmm. uh, had very much of a relationship with Debian until now, and um, I'm hoping that will be an ongoing thing. And the same thing with the, well, Brazil Linux Association. The Software Libre. So the, software, the, that's the, right. The, 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 the project, the Software Libre project. So. Yeah, in, in Brazil last year because of DevConf 4. So that's been a nice side effect of having DevConf globetrot a little bit, mm -hmm. is that we are... Um, uh, accreting. Accreting, accre <laughs> yeah, that's very good, thank you. <laughs> So, so there's also there's also um, there's also money being stored or beginning to be stored in Linux Australia. Um, um, on no, it's there already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the right. uh, Christian Surki is yeah. holding money for Debian in in Italy as well. And there's money in the UK and there's money in other places. So, 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 so SBI occupies a special place. Um, it has an international it has an international board um, and it tries to represent um, it tries to represent uh, a larger number of um, uh, you know, a, a broader section because there are some things that SPI does that other organization doesn't, like holding, for example, the Debian trademark. Um, the Debian, when, the, when the Debian trademark is is registered interna it, is, it has been registered internationally, like in Europe and in Brazil, in Japan as well. um, and in Japan, and um, and in those situations, if someone else registers it, our lawyer contacts them, and if if otherwise, we will register it ourselves. Um, um, so, so this has been something that that I mean, SPI is you know. Ha, has kind of, in terms of in this it's relationship, first among between, equals, <laughs> first among, and it also holds the most money for, and it also holds the most money for for uh, for, for Debian, except for Debcom, except for Debcom, that's true. <laughs> Debcom, yeah, Debcom. So I mean, maybe you guys can share with us exactly how much. Well, we don't know exactly how much money, but uh, <laughs> forty around. It's somewhere in the order of Deb, uh, so SPI holds somewhere in the order of. $50,000 in, in, in gross assets of which probably at least 80% are... 42k it, or so, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe... Okay. So, so and, and the reason we don't have a precise figure, and, and, and I'll go ahead, because since I was an uh, earlier treasurer and I'm closer to the uh, uh, fuck up, is uh, um, the reason we don't know the exact numbers is because um, a lot of the early paperwork having to do with the bank accounts uh, that, that SPI was holding at the time was, was lost by a previous treasurer. No, not me. I, I made different mistakes. Um, um, and, uh, and so for, for some very old money, we simply don't know how the, how the donations were earmarked. Uh, we had two different bank accounts uh, with um, American Express Centurion Bank, but uh, one of them got defrauded. Uh, so it's. So I think the key is to point out that we do know how much money we're holding, yes. but we're not sure what the split was intended to be between Debbie and others. Yes, exactly. Some, so so we've got some all this money, but we're not entirely sure what it's for. Yes, yeah, so some, <laughs> some of it's part of the SPI general fund and some is for Debbie. Got it. Way back when um, the original the screw up the records happened, there was a vote, I'm not sure if it was a Debbie vote yeah. or an SPI vote. It was an SPI vote. It was an SPI vote. To just split up the funds as eighty percent Debian, twenty percent. A five percent rule, like I think. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. I think it was, it was ninety-five and five. And so, is there any reason there isn't just a vote to split it up and decide? There's exactly this much for Debian now, and right. we track it properly. Not been 100% accurate in our uh, record keeping since then, unfortunately. So I, think we, I, think we, I think we have been pretty accurate since Brendan. Uh, well, we, we don't know 
exactly what yet what the donation what the earmark split is of the donations between then and now. I think I, we've I think got we've all of the in, we've got all of the information, but yes. it hasn't been added up. Yes, right. We've, we've been <laughs> wishing. And so it doesn't appear in our kind of you know right. you look at our financial statements, and you can't tell by looking at our financial statements even since then. I found it good for the. So it's not just sort of one lump sum that's originally. So, so one thing that's been happening recently is Jimmy's been doing a much better job than we've seen previously from really anybody um, in getting something approaching right. a normal financial reporting. So so the, the other, um, so financial reporting is getting better when we're handling it and it's about to get better when we're not handling it because we're hiring some, we're hiring a bookkeeping service um, in, in, in New York City that is just basically going to take, um, they're so going to... Yeah. To answer your question specifically, Anthony, I don't think another vote's required because what we may have missed in the noise in that discussion is that the combination of that vote and the information that we have records on since then should be sufficient to get those numbers. They just don't appear in the financial statement. Yet. Is, is that a reasonably easy thing or very healthy? Or I think it ought to be easy, but it hasn't gotten done. I think it will be done. Um, so we're, we're working with the bookkeeper for all the information on this here. I suspect it will be done in the next month or two. So um, we're going to be so, so so we've got this bookkeeper, and we're going to be the, the idea is sending them anything with a number on it, and then right. they're going to be. They're going to be splitting things up by member project. They're going to handle a lot of this stuff, and then they'll say, you know, here's the PDF with, you know, all your information. We've been talking about doing this for years. It's Crass. great that we're finally getting you know, yeah. the, the, the silly bookkeeping stuff done by somebody who does that professionally. Right. You know, because treasurer, yeah, treasurer after treasurer has has crumbled under the uh, burden of having to do all the fiddly, uh, you know, bookkeeping themselves. We're not, we're not good at keeping this on. Right, and that's and that's fine. Um, and every and everybody thinks it should be a cakewalk, and you know, mm -hmm. so anybody who fails is just a screw up. But you know, time and again, with our treasurers, we've we've just seen that a volunteer can't do it. So we said, you know, we've got SPI has some general fund. There are people who donate money to SPI and don't say give it all to Debian. Uh, they want to support the organization generally, and it seems to make a lot of sense to spend that on making ourselves a more responsive and responsible organization. So, so, so the two developments recently um, are, uh, in terms of bookkeeping, uh, bookkeeping and such, is, the, is, is basically a decision to, to, to go ahead and hire a bookkeeper in, in New York City to kind of set together. And kind of a little bit of a wonder from Luke here, who's evidently an advanced accountant. Yes. Um, you'll have to explain exactly what advanced accounting is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it means that yes, it means that means when you cook the books, you don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> it, it means he manages advanced accounts, obviously. Yeah, right. oh. Accounts that have been offered to someone. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so, so we have we have also a little bit of new blood um, in in a couple different places um, in terms of in terms of that. So, so. Um, since we're kind of, you know, I mean, I guess there's not that much time left. Um, uh, if people have kind of questions or comments, or, or uh, I think there's been a sense of, of where we're going. I mean, I, I think that we'll probably see, we've seen more new member projects in the last year and a half than, than we had, you know, total member projects before. Yes. Um, and I think that we're going, this is going to continue, because as we continue to do a better job yeah. of, you know, yeah. keeping, you know, you know, getting, you know, the money sorted out and, you know, have a quicker turnaround and things like that, we'll become more attractive, uh, a more attractive, Place for a lot of these um, organizations. I think of this size. I don't think we're going to be having the next, you know, like like Debian sized projects, you know, joining up, and that's okay. Um, but this is a way that Debian can kind of, you know, another way that Debian developers can kind of work with people in the free software community to help. Does anybody you know, else have a question? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, might it be a good idea for uh, all the organizations such as SPI, FFIS, and anything else that comes along? Agree to have their membership be mutually members of the other group, so we at least have one. We, you know, so of, uh, it's it's interesting. Different people have different impressions about what the right thing to do is here. When I was Debian project leader, I asserted that we should just take everyone who's a registered Debian developer and declare that they were a contributing member of SPI. And there was lots of discussion slash concern about well, that would mean they were automatically added to another mailing list that maybe they didn't want to be a member of. And uh, in, in general, the perception was that you know having a larger number of members who weren't necessarily committed to the organization and who wouldn't necessarily show up for elections and make quorums and things like this, you know, probably 
wasn't the brightest idea. So right. at the end of the day, um, we ended up with an agreement that anyone who was a, you know, a registered developer with Debian would be immediately granted contributing member status if they asked for it. And so I suspect that the reality is that if you showed up at any of these other organizations and said, I'm a contributing member of SPI, they would go, wonderful, we're glad to have you here. Okay. But my suspicion is that the same kind of criteria might apply. Right. And, you know, but perhaps they could be like a and separate... So what, what is FFII's so that, criterion for membership? Do we know? I mean, That's I, Joey Schultz. Uh, I yeah, know. I mean, they might have to be like the lowest common denominator kind of level so, of membership. Well, but well, just so that we can claim... You know, like bigger numbers. Like you can see that the whole. Well, let me let me follow up on Michelle's remarks. I think there was also there were also some people who simply didn't want to be affiliated with a U.S. corporation. Uh, I mean, even if it was nonprofit, even if it was affiliated with Debian. And I think one concern that other organizations might have, especially if they're smaller, is you know they don't want to be swamped with a glut of Americans. Um, uh, you know, do potentially dominating their their organization. I mean, they're trying to set up something local. So, and this is something that we'll see. We've seen with money. So, for example, the the money that the money that is that, that is put together in the UK is, as far as I know, spent in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I know that this is certainly the case in certainly the case in Italy, for example, as well. Um, when they get money at Italian booths, at the at, you know at booths or something like that, they will spend that money to help buy CDs or a banner or something for the Italian booth, and that's totally okay. Yeah. Um, um, that's 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 great, and 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 that kind of local kind of support and storing funds is great and I think that the role of, of SPI and you know Debian is to is to kind of coordinate that. So I think this is a question that I'll inject into the discussion at this uh, sort of forum of, of organizations that's going to be convening before us. Uh, by the way there'll be a, another meeting of this sort of group of groups um, before the OzCon Europe thing later in the year so I don't know if I'll get to that one or not yet. But, We'll see whether this one is and, and kind of related to that, I, I think there's also kind of little uh, amount of fragmentation going on even in the US, because I think I read in like LWN or somewhere that now there's like an open source legal center or something. Oh, uh, well, Software Leaf. Freedom Law there's Center. A that's, yeah. very, that's a very different organization. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, the, the, that, that, I, I remember thinking around that time that, well, that's kind of something like what so, so no, so Software no, no. Freedom Law Center. Software Freedom Soft Law Center is basically people from the FSF who have kind of created another organization that is now kind of, the FSF is now outsourcing a lot of work to. I mean, that's one way to think of it. But, but there's a good amount of kind of legal work um, that, that, that the FSF used to do for itself, that, that people in the FSF want to open up to a wider variety right. of primarily think, volunteer projects. A, a simpler way of stating it is that it's attempting to provide legal Full services, aid, yeah. resources yeah. to projects, and that's a little yeah. different than volunteer projects. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a law firm. If we didn't yeah. already have you know, legal counsel willing to represent us um, in the same way that some other foundations have chosen to go talk to SFLC, we probably would as well. Well, I think that we probably will eventually as well, yeah. because they, they, so I think we want a SFLC, relationship with them at the very least. Because before the, before the Software Freedom Law Center was created, they approached us and they said, and Evan said, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, he is in regular conversation, Evan Milgram from the law, Freedom Law Center, he is in regular conversation with Greg Pomerantz, our lawyer. Um, and I think that if, you know, if push came to shove and Debian find, and SBI finds itself, you know, with, I don't know. No counsel. You know, no, well, or, or even just in a situation where, 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 oh, yeah. where, 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 where Greg okay. wants some help because someone, you know, says you're infringing on this patent or something. Right. Like, I am relatively confident that the Software Freedom Law Center would become involved in one way or another. Uh, one, one of the things we've done over the past year that, that brings to mind uh, service of process, one of the things SPI has done over the past year is we actually have a, a professional company serving as our registered agent. What that means is we have a legal address for service of process, which means if somebody sues us, it's not showing up in a Debian developer's uh, post office box, which was the case, case for a lot of years. And in fact, because uh, the address hadn't been updated, it would have been Tim Saylor's mailbox in Boston, Massachusetts. And who's heard of Tim Saylor in the past five years? So um, what, that's one of the things we've done. And so CSC, Corporation Services Company, is, is somebody we have uh, we're retaining to, to serve that role for us. So we're, it, and they're it, in New York It's State. one of the small but significant ways in which we've been making progress over the past yeah, And year. I can see how other projects might need that kind of service too. So, yeah. you know, if, if like SPI could become like the one-stop, 
you know, <laughs> administrative support for you know yeah. free software projects. That was the vision, and, and what we've seen is, as uh, Mick mentioned earlier, there are a number of other projects that either due to scale or due to personal or political considerations have decided they'd like to run their own corporations and have been willing to do the paperwork for the U.S. registration process. We've ended up, even just in the U.S., with you know a half dozen or eight uh, sort of interesting foundations. And if you had in the sort of significantly large enough to be worth inviting them to come to the U.S. for a meeting, there ends up being a list of almost two dozen around the world that I think were invited to participate in this upcoming meeting. My hope, actually, is that if nothing else, we'll figure out how to share some best practice knowledge. There are people, for example, who've done a lot more work on researching trademark issues and trademark licensing than we have. I think there are things that we have figured out that maybe they haven't. And so if we can share some of this stuff, maybe at least we end up you know, yeah. leveraging some of them. You know, SPI's been butting its head against this problem for nearly a decade. And that's much longer than some of these other organizations. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't any such thing as, as, as GNOME or KDE in 1997. And so, you know, hopefully, hopefully we, we do have something to bring to the table. Since b has been affiliated with him for a while, I think he's in a good position to share some of that expertise. Yes, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know how that process is going to work out in practice, but I'm encouraged, actually, that you know, someone's taking the effort. It's actually the folks from the GNOME Foundation that mm -hmm. triggered this uh, this meeting to happen, and the O'Reilly folks agreed to provide a, a place for the meeting to occur before OSCON. So it's funny for me because I'm not actually going to OSCON this year, but I'm going to Portland for this meeting. So, right. so we'll come back with something called the Portland Prospectus. <laughs> <laughs> Editorial changes. In the <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Editorial we'll changes in the SPI bylaws. We're like out of time. I, we could deal with some editorial changes. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions you want to get out now? Uh, well, actually, no. uh, I've just been informed that uh, we actually have m more time because th the next talk's not happening at all, or it's no, there's late. nothing here uh, until uh, after lunch. So. Yeah, but oh, okay. But there's something going on in the larger auditorium. Yeah, I mean, if you if what, you want, people may want to go to the larger auditorium. What time does the next talk start in the other room? It starts at, at, at ten. ten. Okay, so we got five. Five. What is it? What is, does anyone else have a question that we're trying to answer right now? Five. Okay. We're all very quiet. Questions. Concerning somehow. No other questions? Well, I mean, has this been helpful? Do you do you feel more informed about SPI than you did before? You yeah. Know, with, yeah. I'm just wondering who, from where do you get your main funding? Who is funding? Donate, it's all donations. donations. We have no source of revenue apart from charitable giving on the part of businesses and mostly individuals. So, so for example, um, about a year and a half ago, I went through the little bit of paperwork to arrange so that any Hewlett Packard employee in the world who wants to donate to SPI can do it through the normal annual giving process through the web interface where you decide how you want. I deposited for the check. We so when it shows, it sh er, there, there's like one or two people who did it last year. I'm hoping yeah. there'll be more this year. I think and uh, it shows up as a as a lumped deposit or something, and there's some annotation as to With the names of the people. And, yeah. and, and, and just as a funny, interesting anecdote, Microsoft has a charitable giving program with matching, and there is a Microsoft employee who has donated out of their paycheck a not an inconsiderable sum of money. I think it's in the hundreds of dollars. And and it's funny, and it's funny because we, we keep I, I, we, we keep we keep faxing back Microsoft. Well, Microsoft keeps telling us you need to send us information so we can match this, and we fax it. And then about a month later, we get another letter saying, you need to send us information or we can't match this, and we fax them something. So I, I, I think we're much too small and insignificant to actually you know, be harassed by Microsoft in this respect. But it's kind of funny to see that happen. So maybe someday we'll actually get some money directly from Microsoft. That's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, so where do you think is the is, uh, areas of interest or something like that where uh, SBI should evidently be more active or where people would be needed to be more active but it would be, uh, yeah, are there any obvious uh, kind of stuff that uh, should be done but isn't done because nobody... Uh, There's a lot of people who come, come up to SBI and they, they, they say, I have this really cool new idea for something to do and you, SBI, should do it. And well, that's obviously just not going to work. And anyway, SPI only does boring things. Well, I mean, so I mean basically, SPI does accounts, 
and historically very badly. Um, so, so if you've got some good thing you want to do, then by all means come and talk to SBI and we can put you on our list of projects or something. I mean, it doesn't really, it probably doesn't buy you anything. I, so, I mean, to, to answer you concretely, uh, something that needs to be done is a revision of our bylaws. Because yes. the bylaws we have, so. we're, we're, we're lift, we're, they suck, they are internally inconsistent, and, as, and as, 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 they're awful. And before you, before you make uh, what may be the obvious assumption, well, they were lifted uh, wholesale from a boilerplate set of bylaws that I believe the legal firm that originally chartered, uh, uh, helped us to charter SPI set up. So these are like real professional businesses bylaws. And they're internally inconsistent, and they suck. It's not like some one of our volunteers. I think Ian Jackson, if he we, took the time to could, do it, would come up with something far we superior. <laughs> we, we're not creative enough to make these up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 if you're interested in that sort of thing, it'd be wonderful to have that work done. And yeah. the other thing is, I think it would actually be really interesting to see SPI specifically represented at some of the more interesting conferences and events, that are, particularly the ones that have you know, a, a dot .org pavilion or, or yeah. some other yeah. you know, sort of thing like this. It's my perception that our um, you know, peer organizations in other countries will usually show up and have a banner and, and answer questions from people and mm -hmm. you know, exhibit form and things like that. I don't think SBI has ever... Uh, no, I think that's 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 some kind of general one-page introduction to SPI, like we can like have a flyers and... So like okay. another, another, another thing is if people yeah. have uh, uh, ideas on how, like, despite the fact that we are primarily useful for U.S. donors, there are still lots of non-U.S. donors who want to donate to us. Uh, and if people have ideas of how to do that without relying on something such as PayPal, or, uh, or I don't mind the payment service, but PayPal is known to be sketchy. So if... Um, they're a bank, but they're not a bank, and they go to court and crap like that. Right. So if, if there's a legitimate, uh, reasonable pay, uh, payment service or some other way, we've also talked about getting a merchant account with uh, a, a, a bank, a more, a more legitimate bank, um, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, well, so then PayPal, because we're pretty happy with First ID. No, I'm talking about something like Echo, like I mentioned online. Okay. Right. But, yeah. Well, yeah, but they may not know that. Yeah. Could, uh, uh, this is probably going to be an administrative nightmare, but could the... Uh, people in particular countries where, if you've got a lot of people donating a fiver, then it's just a nine, yeah, then yeah. it accumulates in the local so, country. If you actually want to get that into the States, you do it all in one go. Yeah. So Debian becomes an international courier firm, basically, because we go all over the place yeah. all the time. That, yeah. does turn out to be, <laughs> that does turn out to be pretty hard because of various countries' laws regarding... It depends on the yeah. organization that it's coming from, because um, it, it's relatively um, easy to get money in. It's not SPI's problem, but for other charitable organizations, it can look like it's a feeder organization yeah. or something, and it can get a little tricky. Um, um, but I think that I think that I think that maybe so another another good another thing that could, that could be really useful is kind of helping uh, both codify and codify and map out some of the relationships between between SPI and other organizations. Like what what is the relationship between Debian between Oscillate between I don't know these these you know. So, so. You're saying that uh, none of the uh, all the money comes from donations. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't in the, sell anything. In the UK, yeah. the UK has got a few thousand pounds. That's all from profits made at uh, stalls on uh, experts. Yeah, they well, actually well, 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 to make well, profits. Well, point. Since so how, how does that work in the States? Do well, when well, people I, I, turn I, I up think, at think, well, who gets well, the money? Well, in, in the past, I mean, this hasn't happened lately because what's happened is Ubuntu has dumped a shitload of, of, of CDs on, on people, uh, Debian. so Debian doesn't actually distribute any CDs anymore. But, but what used to happen was we would uh, we would offer T-shirts at various booths at, yeah. like, say, Linux World on both coasts, and uh, in exchange for a donation, you would get a T-shirt. Yeah, so yeah. The, the the revenues in, it, in in excess of the costs would oh, be donated donation, to the yeah. Debian project, and those would come through SPI. No, that's yeah. a, uh, De Debian sold that last time. So Debian still does that. CDs? Yeah, does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so the way to so the way so you, to I was at the one in San Francisco, yeah. and that, well, anyway. It happened in, it happened in Boston. I love you oh, all, but I want to do the other talk. <laughs> yeah. they, they were gone before you showed up. Oh, okay. All right. Right. Okay, I was a little ignorant about... Uh, we just didn't have enough money. Oh, no. I think that money often goes to SPI still, or no? The money didn't go to SPI. The one from yeah. Boston certainly is. Yeah, yeah, it does. I walked out with like $100,000 in cash from SPI. Yeah. 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 I don't remember I that actually coming in. I sent it to Matt Taggart, who then sent it to you. Okay. 
so I have so because Matt because Matt had had purchased all the T-shirts. Right. And so so I so I yeah. sent him the T-shirts. He took out whatever. I took, I, I sent him a check. He sent he took out whatever. Uh, right. Thank gosh. So yeah, the, the, the funniest check like, the, like that that I ever got was from Clint Adams after New York one year, and the, me the memo field of the check was Linux World Aftermath, after math. <laughs> it was very cute. <laughs> so I think uh, I have your after, like I said, an email. You, you think that the email? Oh, nice. Yeah. Basically, I didn't want to do it unattended in this uh, movie because it's... Uh, too easy to get lost in it. Something you don't want to lose, you know. I know. Yeah. Thanks, Donna. Checkbooks. Huh? Checkbooks. Uh, I have them. No, I thought that's what you were talking no. about. No. Oh, okay. No, his universal power adapter. Okay. Yeah.